Okay, so today we're going to talk about the S3 fire alarm panels. This is the one of the latest panels Gamewell has come out with. They came out with it a few years ago. You can see on the screen, it's called SLP-E3. Uh, it's commonly shortened to S3, so you just take that first letter and that last character there, the S and the 3. And that's what everyone refers to it as. Even Gamewell refers to it as the S3 panel. SLP stands for Smart Loop Panel. And I'll show you why it's called a Smart Loop Panel. And then it's part of the E3 family. Uh, this panel came out and replaced the 7100 panel that had been around for quite a while. And the 7100 panel was a really good panel for its time. We used it for a lot of sprinkler monitoring stuff. And we also put it in a lot of like lower rise buildings, lease spaces, even some mid rise buildings. It was, it was a really good robust little panel and it was just kind of getting old technology wise. So they came out with this that replaced it and it was an upgrade in a lot of ways, but they also upgraded the price quite a bit. I think at the time it came out compared to the 7100s, they were phasing out. It was almost twice the price of a 7100. So because of that price point, it's not really a sprinkler monitoring panel very often. To get into the E3 family, you can see over here on this picture, this is the S3 panel here. This is an enunciator where you see that same display that's in the S3 is also here in this can. We can get this cabinet for enunciators. You see it has a locking door. Normally, if we're just putting an enunciator like that, we don't bother with the one with the locking door. We put one that's like a flush mount plate that just has a key lock on it. So the display still locks to keep it code compliant, but it doesn't have the door that swings open. If we're going to use something that has a door, it'll look more like this enunciator over here and we'll have a microphone or some extra switches with it. There's also this cabinet here in the center where you can see that there's this other display. I'll get into the displays on the next slide, but there's this one and then there's the buttons. They make mounting plates so we can put the S3 in this cabinet here as well as it normally comes in, in this over here and it's how we're normally going to use it. But if a situation calls for it, or maybe we need some extra switches for control or something, you might see it show up in that cabinet. Uh, it is also networkable or connectable to everything you see in this picture here. As shown over here, you can see there's the network where you can attach multiple S3s together, or you can attach it to a larger E3 network. Maybe it has voice. Um, there is a municipal fire alarm. We don't really use that in Texas. Chicago is one of the last places I know of that still uses municipal fire alarms like that. Uh, over the Ethernet, we can connect our laptops to program, or we can use the older style of connection over the RS-232. Most of y'all won't have to deal with that. Just the people we send through training to be able to program the panels, they'll be the only ones that have to deal with either of these two options. This other thing over here, this is a, a workstation we can give to like a school district or a facility manager where we actually import the floor plan and we put symbols on the floor plan showing where their devices are and it connects to the panel and it can actually light up and direct them at their facility manager office or their you know maintenance person office or whatever. And it'll show them, hey, not only does this place have an alarm or have a trouble, it'll take them to exactly which device and where the trouble is so that it helps them handle their situation in their facility better. Uh, it also connects to SLC. This can be a single loop panel or a two loop panel. That's where that smart loop panel name comes into play. It's an extra add-on card for how you put loops on there. And then it connects to all the various um, RS-485 displays that are out there. So it can connect to the older E3 displays. It can connect to the older 7100 displays. It can, you can add those extra control buttons on and you can get the graphic enunciators where you light up LEDs for the maps and that sort of thing. So these are the three displays. The one in the center, the one labeled LCD SLP, that's the one that comes in the main panel. And typically if we're going to put an enunciator on one of these, we're going to use that same one, but it is compatible with the other two on the screen. The one on the left is the NGA, Network Graphic Enunciator. Um, it's the most expensive of the three options. It's the most capable of the three options as well. It has some extra functions that the other two displays don't do that are that are specific for larger E3 systems that you might need, like network query kind of things. Those are things that normally your programming technician will be the one that'll get the most into. But that display is a touchscreen. 
the LCD SLP is also a touchscreen and then has a few manu or a few um, actual physical buttons as well. And then the one furthest to the right is the LCD E3. That's the first of these three displays to come out. It's the oldest out there. It's just the two lines of basic LCD text. Then all the buttons on it are just the physical buttons. The, the, the display doesn't cycle as much information. It's a little, little more clunky to navigate just because it's older. The LCD SLP is the newest. And so a lot of it's going to be very intuitive on the touchscreen because it's so much newer. Uh, you, three of the hard buttons you have down here, you have the reset. And then you have the, the drill and the, the menu. And so those will get into function of how to actually navigate it. Um, I didn't plan that part in this. Uh, we might need to do at some point, post some operation videos of each different panel. Uh, I don't have any hard plans to do any of that right now. Up here across the top, we have uh, four LEDs, one's for fire alarm, that'll light up red if there's an alarm. Uh, then there's hazard. That'll light up blue. That's for like carbon monoxide stuff. There's supervisories that'll light up amber. And then there's troubles, which will also light up amber. And then there's these five buttons here that don't have a label, but you see there's a spot for an LED below each of them. These buttons are programmable to do different functions. And it's actually why I think this is the best display out of the three. It's not that it's the most capable, it's that it gives us these five buttons included in the display. And so we can set up like a NAC bypass button or an elevator recall bypass button. And those are helpful for things like uh, annual inspections when our inspectors go out there and they need to test the elevator lobby smoke, but the, the, the customer's not ready for us to disable their elevator yet. We can hit that button. We can test to make sure the smoke detector is still functioning properly. And then we can set up a time where we actually test the elevator recall separate of testing that smoke. Uh, we can also set up bypasses for air handler unit shutdowns so that we can, if we're in a facility that maybe they wanted the air handlers to shut down under general alarm, we can do that. And as we go through the inspection, we're not constantly turning the air conditioner off and back on and off and on. And that's, that's really bad for their air conditioner as well as it makes the building uncomfortable to be in. So we can bypass that feature and then come back and test the air handler shutdown all at once and only do it the one time and not be as hard on their units. But all three of these are compatible with the S3 panel. All three of these are also compatible with every other E3 product out there. So most E3 panels, we've actually started putting these LCD SLPs in there because they do work really well and they do give us those extra buttons that are just nice to use. So here's what the panel looks like when you open it up. Uh, this is how it opens brand new without any doing any work to it yet at all. You see, here's where the display mounts. So it has this back plate here and then it's, eight little hex nuts that just screw there. And then there's the key lock that has a wire that goes up and connects to the board. And so that key lock will, if it's locked, it won't let you push anything on the display at all. You have to put the key in and turn it. That way people don't just walk up and start pushing buttons on a life safety system that they don't know what they're doing. And then over here is where everything else is. And this right here is just a little bit of an enlarged picture, even though it's kind of grainy and hard to make out really. But there's two parts you have down here. You have the, the flip seven power supply. It's FLPS or whatever, but it's shorthand referred to as the flip seven. It's where your 120 volt lands right here under these terminals. And then there's this jumper cable that comes up here and goes to your motherboard. This whole part up here is your motherboard. Right here is your screw terminals for your battery. Uh, here's where your ribbon cable goes over to connect to your display. Over here is your ethernet port. And then right here is a port for connecting the laptop for programming. Your NAC circuits will land up here. Auxiliary power and your uh, enunciator data comes from over here. Right here, you have trouble alarm and supervisory relays that you can connect to. On some of the other panels we've talked about, those relays have been programmable so you can customize them and use them for whatever you want. On this panel, they are not the one for alarm is a general alarm relay, it's not changeable. Uh, the trouble relay is trouble only and supervisory only does supervisory. None of them change, they are, they are only that and they are always that. Right above these relays, there's four buttons. Um, there's reset, trouble acknowledge, alarm acknowledge and system silence. So if for any reason the display stops working, I've had times where there's been a bad DACT card or a a bad enunciator out in the field that screws up the, the RS-485 connection. 
And so the display that's here on the, that connects through this ribbon cable mounted in this door won't actually respond right. These buttons give you an extra control inside there that's I've found useful a handful of times. And then right here, this row over here is uh, LEDs that give you your status. So it'll tell you, it tells you all four of your NAC circuits separately, as well as alarm, trouble, supervisory, power. This is where your four NAC circuits land up here at the top center. One thing that I think is the best feature of those four NAC circuits, they have an auto end of line detection. So they, uh, as long as all four of them have the same resistor on there, it'll clear. It makes it really nice for retrofit applications. So we're not going out and trying to find all the end of lines and have to put in, you know, a 47K or a 4.7K ohm resistor, whatever the panel would want. Instead, they're able to, uh, this panel is able to look out. And if, if the old panel that's being replaced used 15K ohm or 20K ohm or 2K ohm, it doesn't matter. This panel is able to see that they're all the same and it uses each circuit individually to check to make sure all the circuits are fine. And then if you have blank circuits, you just have to find a resistor that matches what's out there in the field. And that makes it, uh, makes it a little nicer for those retrofits. And then the last part is over here. There's these two rectangles. I don't have a lot going on. You can probably see these black blocks here. Maybe you can see the screw terminals on this side. These are the cards that really make the smart loop panel part of it because these are where your loop cards go. They're little accessory add-on cards. And if you're only using a single loop panel, you just put one card right here. And if you're using two loops, then you put a second card here. You have to have at least one loop card on it for it to do anything, but you don't have to have that second loop if you don't want to, but you don't have to buy a whole separate motherboard just because you want a separate loop. That was one of the things with the 7100, you had to buy different panels if you wanted a second loop. And then also with the SLC loops on the 7100, it was clip mode only, which we haven't talked about clip mode in a little while. That's short for classic loop interface protocol. Basically, that just means the panel talks to one device at a time in the field. So it pulls smoke detector one, then two, then three, and so on. And communication with that on larger systems could get kind of slow. This panel is capable of clip loop. So if you have older devices out there, you can enable clip mode and it'll still talk to your older devices. But if, if your devices aren't too old and they're new enough that they can talk on what GameWell calls velocity mode, it can communicate faster at uh, 10 devices per time. So if you're, if you're in an area that maybe you have elevator recall and you have your three or four modules there on the wall right in front of you, and they're in the same bank of addresses sequentially, with clip mode, you would watch them pull in order. So, you know, if they were addresses one, two, three, four, you'd watch one, then two, then three, then four flash. With velocity mode, all four of those will flash at the same time. You know, unless you're over one of those address breaks where say you've got two in one section of addresses and two in the other, then you'll watch two flash at a time, then the other two. But you can actually see that velocity mode go that way. Um, another difference between velocity mode and clip mode with smoke detectors, uh, they'll only pull red in clip mode. In velocity mode, if everything is free and clear and good, they'll pull green. If there's a problem with the address, they'll pull red. And then if they're an alarm, then they're solid red. Whereas with clip mode, they were either pulling red or solid red. You didn't have that extra green to verify that they were checking in good. So sometimes trying to find issues in the field, that pulling red can be nice. The 7100 wasn't capable of that. The S3 and the E3 series is. So I mentioned we have to have those SLC cards. The part number for them is SLC PM. There's a second card that it could be, which is SLC PM95. Gamewell used to have old Apollo devices that are very similar to Silent Night's Hochiki. Uh, this panel can talk to them instead of an SLC PM SLC card. You just get the PM95 and put it in the same spot. And it talks to the, the Apollo devices. If you have system sensor devices on one loop, the other loop can only be system sensor. So you can't mix and match on the same panel. So if you're in a large building that has multiple loops and some of the floors might have older Apollo stuff, but some of the floors have been retrofitted to have system sensor, then the floors with system sensor will have to go to one panel 
and the floors with Apollo will have to go to a completely separate panel, but they can be networked together. So it can still function as one fire alarm. It just requires two separate control panels. But you can see up here, I kind of showed that's more or less where it sits. Uh, here's a kind of a closer, better look at it. And th this is the other hardware it comes with. So these two standoffs will go at these two screw points over here so that you can mount the board. And then there's that black box you see it. This red label right here, they had to add these on newer ones because when this first came out, a lot of people were installing this card upside down and it would actually fry the motherboard and fry the card and people didn't know what was happening until the factory finally snapped to it. Hey, this is kind of a confusing looking card. So they put a, a red sticker on it that said, install this side up. So as you install it, that red sticker should face you. Um, unless you're the one programming it, there's a good chance you're not building this part of the panel. But if you ever have interest in going to factory training, this is a really good thing to know. Uh, the other thing this panel does not have built in is the DACT, the Digital Alarm Communication Transmitter. That's the, the interface for the phone lines. The 7100 did have that. 7100 was weird. You could buy a 7100 without a DACT built in, or you could buy it with, but all the fire alarm panels have to be monitored. So it's really odd that they sold it without that, especially when you could just disable it in the programming if you were using an external dialer that just monitored your, your three um, relay contacts. But it connects over the same RS-485 network that your enunciators talk on. So it gets the same power as your enunciators and it gets the same data communication as your enunciator. And that lands on this top terminal here. Um, you ha you'll have your communication A and B come in the middle two terminals will be A and B out, and then the bottom two terminals are your positive and negative power. When you're wiring this up, make sure you're always using the wiring manual. This terminal block down here is an eight terminal. So this one has the six terminals I just said. The eight terminals down here are for your phone lines. You'll have phone line tip and ring in, then tip and ring out, then phone line two tip and ring in and tip and ring out. So it'll be one, two, then you skip three and four and you use five and six and skip seven and eight unless you're using line seizure on one of those. Uh, if you have questions about what is line seizure or any of that, uh, let me know and I'll answer your question separately. But you can see I showed that one mounts here. And similar to how this has the standoffs, this also uses standoffs and mounts over the motherboard. There is another set of four screws here that you could make it mount, uh, but that's reserved for the, the repeater card that lets it talk to the network because there's a black box right here that the ribbon cable for the repeater has to attach to and that ribbon cable is very short so you can't mount the repeater over here the ribbon cable won't won't reach that distance it has to go here also your rs-485 stuff that mounts here or connects here is directly below this terminal so if you mount this card over on this side you're having to run wire around your panel to get it to connect if you mount it over here it's just really short little jumpers that make it easier to work with so speaking of the repeater, this is what the repeater looks like. So you see it's still that square. This is where that ribbon cable connects. Um, you, you can also connect it via other means over here, but it's, it's a much more stable connection with the ribbon cable. It's faster and easier to install. It's always better to use that ribbon cable. And then there's also the in and out terminal so that you can use a copper network. So you can use like 18.2, um, just regular, like SLC wire can be your network to go from panel to panel and it can land there. Or if you want to use fiber optic. So if we're going between buildings, we prefer fiber. Uh, you can get these add-on cards that'll mount here and here. So you can get in and out. And this is an FML E3. That's fiber multi-mode for E3. They also have an FSL for single mode fiber. So depending on what kind of fiber optic they have at that facility, this card is interchangeable without having to order completely different repeater cards. All the, all the programming on this, this panel it can only be done over the laptop. You can't do it through the keypad. The 7100 was completely keypad programmable from A to Z, didn't matter what it was. You could program everything in that 7100 through the keypad. Uh, Gamewell and Honeywell has been gradually pushing to have it where you have to have a laptop and certification and go through training and, and your license all up to date to make it to where only the trained uh, licensed professionals are the ones doing the programming. 
So even the Silent Night panels that have always been completely programmable through the keypad, they've lost all that. They're, they're progressively losing that capability. Um, so like the latest Silent Night panels to come out, you can still program through the keypad, but there's like a lot of the mapping and stuff has been lost where you have to have a laptop to really get that stuff right. I'm trying to think, I think that covers all kind of the features and install of this panel. Like I said, operation, I didn't want to get into that. That can be a video all of its own. But if y'all have any, any questions about this panel, what, when do we use this panel? What do we use this panel for? Or any of that kind of stuff or any other questions for that matter. Floors open. All right. Well, if y'all don't have any questions, uh, Thank you for being here. Y'all are free to go. Make sure you signed in in the chat if you haven't already. Looks like most people have. Um, Y'all stay safe and I'll see you next week.